championship season is over, apart from playoffs, let's rank how well each team has done in this disgusting but beautiful league. We did this for Prem, and I did shoot gun a little bit too fast, saying that Liverpool had went league, and then they turned into liquid ass. So I'm going to just stick to saying things that have happened and not actually predict anything. The categories are acting good, shite, did what's expected, but probably could have done more, otherwise known as dwepichkudum. About right, nice, and good. But let's just get straight into it. Birmingham. Shite. I mean, what a place to start. 60k seater in League One. 40,000 empty seats might be a record. They had a good manager in John Eustace at the time and decided to sack him for a big shiny name like Rooney. And yeah, it's only 11 games in, but he had him in playoffs. Regardless of what you say, it's only 11 games. I'm not bothered. Playoffs is playoffs and he were there. It's a very Birmingham thing to do to go and get a flash name like Rooney or Zola. And then it's come and bit him in ass because Houston has gone to Blackburn, kept them up, and Birmingham have gone down instead. They have been flirting with relegation for like almost half a decade, so it's not the most surprising thing ever. But after the start that they had, to get relegated takes some talent. So they're worse than shit. They are acting good, and they're down there on their own. Blackburn, I did expect more from Blackburn, to be honest. They finished 7th last season. I think they only finished 7th on goal difference to miss out on it. And yeah, they did lose Ben Brereton Diaz, who's a very, very good player. And this season, they've gone from being a one-man band in him to being... An even bigger one man band in Sammy Smoddix. His top goal scorer in the league. I think his top goal scorer in country behind Harland, and that's it for a team that's stayed up on last day. It's ridiculous. But after being in a relegation battle basically all year, they've managed to stay up, which is all that matters. Next season might look bleak for him, especially because Smoddix is definitely going to leave. But as far as this season's concerned, it's been shite. Bristol City, I cannot with these guys anymore. They're the Championship Palace. They're even more boring than Palace now. They have one interesting season since they got promoted. And I think they finished 8th. That's it. That's all they've done in years. They're just so boring. They never do anything. Are they about right? Or are they do Oh, They're about right. Who else is going to finish in like 12th to 15th if it's not them? Cardiff finished 12th, which I think is quite a good season to be honest. I thought Cardiff had struggled before a ball were kicked. Not go down, but I thought they'd be down there. So to have finished mid-table, a lot of injuries to a lot of players, I think... I think that's quite nice from a Cardiff perspective. Cov. Now, again, they're a bit weird, aren't they? Because last season, they got to the playoff final, lost on penalties to Luton. Um, and I do feel like the FA Cup run has taken it out of them a bit in the league. But after that Wolves game, I think they've lost nine games. Somewhat ridiculous like that. Nope, sorry. It's nine league games and they've lost six and only won two. So, regardless, after that Wolves game, they have just fallen off a cliff. Again, don't get me wrong. I had Coventry finishing eighth, I think, before the season started. So, it, they're roughly where I expected them to be. But as season goes on, your expectations change, don't you? And clearly, they're a good enough side to be up there. They want to bet Wolves. They want to took Man United to extra time. So, it, it, it's about right. But next season, I expect a lot more. Huddersfield? <sighs> God, look at their league finishes in the last 20 years. They have been all over the place. And despite one freak season with Carlos, where they got to the playoff final and then lost because VAR's crap, don't worry, it, it has happened to us all, I've been there. They are same as Birmingham, where they've just been flirting with relegation for years on end. So it's not a massive, massive surprise that they've dropped, but you'd have expected them to put up a little bit of a fate. They were closer to being a Rotherham than like even a Birmingham. Birmingham took it to last day, but Uddersfield, I think they've had a bet that they've been crowded, don't get me wrong, and they are acting good. But they've not been as bad as Birmingham because of the situation that Birmingham were in earlier in the season, where they could have been in playoffs for a bit of time. Hull, my God, have I got a lot to unpack here with Hull. Hull's manager got nominated for manager at year, right? Which, fair enough, they finished seventh. They're not like a, a Leeds or a Leicester that you'd have expected to be here at start of the season. But Hull have failed big time. After selling Lewis Potter to Brentford last season, they've had a lot of money. And on their incomings, their actual permanent signings, they've spent it well. That that Omo, that Turkish bloke, Villa Jeans, one of the best players in the championship. Two really good buys. But let's have a look at loans that they've brought in. Scott Twine, who's just been promoted with Burnley. Vinagra has been at Wolves. He's a good player. Giles from Luton. Liam DeLapp, who's had a good couple of loans with Stoke and Preston. Morton from Liverpool. Zaruri from Burnley. Fabio Carvalho from Liverpool. Are you serious? Th this gaffer gets a manager at year nomination for finishing outside of the playoffs with these guys. Imagine the loan fee, the, the wage bill for a club like Hull. No disrespect to Hull because they're a decent-sized team, but they've not been in Prem for a few years now. They're not going to have the parachute money. And they're spending a lot of the money that they've got from Lewis Potter on a season where they've not even had a chance of getting promoted. This is such a waste financially. All them loan fees and wages that these lads will be on, it's just such a waste. What a crap year. And EFL to give him a nomination for manager at year. Same as Fark as well. When you look at relegation battle and some managers that have pulled stuff on down there, clowns. Honestly, clowns. So I will stick them in shite. Ipswich, I mean, we went from one extreme to other, aren't we? 
Kieran McKenna wants a statue outside of Ipswich. This is the best season in England, not just in Championship. Back-to-back -back promotions from League 1 to Premier League for the first time since 2012, I think, when Southampton did it. And last season, even though they didn't win League, Plymouth did. Ipswich were best side in it by an absolute landslide. Anybody who watched that or if your team were in there and you saw that Ipswich team, you knew that we were going to be something serious. And then they just carried it on into this year. 96 points, 92 goals. This is still the majority of the League 1 team that's just been coached perfectly. Unbelievable how well they've done. The true undisputed goers. Wow, we are on a roll of very contrasting seasons. Leeds, shite. Shite club, shite manager, shite team. They're just shite. Honestly, how you can not get promoted with that squad or with Somerville in your team especially is beyond me. I, I, I generally think I could go in there. I've never played or managed anything in my life. I could go in there and get them promoted. And now that they're shitty and finished third, I've seen Leeds fans on Twitter saying that the squad isn't even that good. What? Piro and Ruta, Nonto and Dan James, Somerville, Ampadu, probably six at 20 best players in league, all playing for one team that some Leeds fans are saying aren't a good enough squad to get promoted now. The real fraud at this club is Fark. There is nothing happening. There's no, like, patient build-up. There's just nothing going on. He's literally, let's get ball to Somerville, let's get ball to Ruta, and vibes. I mean, I hope they keep him forever, because let's just say that they do get promoted. Fark's got as much experience at keeping a team in Premier League as I have, so it means nothing. They'll come straight back down. Leicester, won league, 97 points, one of the best championship squads ever. It would have been a genuine travesty if they didn't go up, especially after blowing that 17-point lead at one point. But they turned it round, and so they should. We're a £200 million squad, not forget. And, and that is expected. So you could have a mere, to be honest, because you'd expect a team of this calibre to win league. But... They did stop Leeds going up. They did stop Leeds getting top two. So for that reason, they're in nice. Middlesbrough, they're definitely in the Dwepichism category. They finished fourth last season and then dropped down to eighth. I did expect more from them, to be honest, so they could be teetering into shite, but I, I will keep them there. They lost a couple of the best players from last season, and you could tell because they started so, so poorly this time. So cut them a tiny bit of slack and keep them here. But I'm expecting more from them next season, especially if they keep Carrick. F*** them out. These are same as Middlesbrough, to be honest. They've not kicked on at all. They've got worse from last season. They tried bringing in Joe Edwards, who was a coach that actually plays football. But this is Millwall running about. No Millwall team will ever keep a ball on floor for more than 10 seconds ever. They've got a squad full of lumps. Once they've gone back to Neil Harris, who is an expert at coaching lumps, they've managed to just get out of relegation for any sort of trouble they were in. Just immediately gone because they brought Neil Harris in. <laughs> Value of the players is plummeting, to be honest. And it's not a cycle that you want to be in. Yeah, the... <sighs> I mean, they're just there, aren't they? They're the same as middles, but slightly better. Norwich, I think, have done all right. I'm going to put Coventry in there as well. But Norwich, I think, have done all right. They got six, which, I mean, if you looked at league table and you didn't see Norwich in top six in championship, then you'd assume that they're probably 20th in Premier League. But but I think they've done, as expected, teetering on being quite nice because there's a lot of good squads in and around them and they've done quite well. I don't think they'll go up, but you know what? I won't gonna, I won't going to predict anything more. Retract that. I'm just going to keep them there. Plymouth, I think, have done well. They're going into nice category. I'll stick them there. If you're a newly promoted team and you stay up, you've instantly done well. Some very good signings when they got promoted. And like I've said, I feel like 100 times now. You get promoted and you don't buy your loans, you're an idiot. So they did well by getting Ballymumba. They brought record transfer fee to bring in Morgan Whitaker, who's now worth five, six, seven times what they paid for him in space for a year. The resale value on him now is ridiculous. He's been a big, big part of what is a good year. So we'll keep him there. Preston, boring as out, but it's what you'd expect. I mean, they are just a slightly better Bristol City, aren't they? They did flirt with promotion for a little bit and flirted with playoffs until end, so it's better than normal, but they're still just there, aren't they? Like, they're one of them that I think will never, ever take that next step and get in there. Not not get promoted, I don't think they'll get in there. There's something there that's not working where they just can't take that next step, and I don't know what it is. But to be honest, for a club the size of Preston to continuously be in championship year after year, not be even close to a relegation battle, even if you're not doing anything near the top end, they're just constantly staying up, turning over decent money doing all right qpr honestly they, i'm gonna evaluate this as a whole fantastic season genuinely in my eyes i was convinced they wanted to try and get relegated when they brought ainsworth in because that guy has never been a football manager the ball is in play when he's in charge for about eight minutes it's absolutely horrible it makes you want to scratch your eyeballs out and i also really really don't like it when clubs appoint managers that have had history as a player for that club like ainsworth were a good player at qpr a bit of an hero so he got more time than he should have been given if it were Say if it were Bob Smith from Downton Road that were manager of QPR, they're not going to give him the same amount of time that they're going to give Ainsworth just based on, like, loyalty, which could have bit him in ass. 
Thankfully, since then, the Santa Magotsi Fuentes in, who is an absolute genius and bet leads 4 0, so instantly a top and nice. Very well done. Rotherham, I mean, Rotherham are crap, but everybody knows the crap and everyone expects them to be crap. So it's not a surprise when they're crap. I'd expected them to go down, but they could have maybe tried to get more than 25 points. Wednesday, I just, I'm not doing it again. I've just made a full video noshing the gaffer off for 10 minutes. No way. Go and watch that if you want, but they can sit in there, the disgusting, horrible runts. Southampton. This is a bit of an odd one, really, because when you come down from Premier League, you just automatically expect to be in and around top six, don't you? Except for, like, exceptional circumstances, like Sheffield United next season who are going to struggle. Southampton came down with a good squad, a really good squad at the time, until they sold, like, £200 million pounds worth of players. But you'd expect them to be roughly where they are. They finished fourth. They've probably got the worst team out of the three that came down. So, excluding an absolute freakish season from Ipswich, Southampton have finished roughly in the order that you would expect them to. They're about right, I think. They sold a lot of the good players. They sold loads and loads of players. New manager. The, the team's not on the same planet of that of Leeds or Leicester. And I think they've done well for what they can expect to have done. Stoke. I mean, I'm sorry for getting graphs out again, but who will finish between 14th and 16th if it's not Stoke? In fact, this season they've actually done worse than they've dropped a place. Very, very exciting, I know. You can probably spin a wheel with them four positions on and it'll find out what Stoke's position will be next year. Tony Pulis is spinning in his grave at what they've become. Do I him? Sunderland? Wow, am I underwhelmed with Sunderland. I'm, I am so disappointed. I was fully, fully on board with promotion party me for them this season. Young squad, exciting, good manager in Moby that plays good football. I really, really expected more from them. But they have not got the stones in them to push on. There's been a couple of times this season through various stages where they've got quite close at top six. Got really close, got a nosebleed and had to do six losses in a row and fade all the way back. It's close to being a stinking season, really, for like expectation that we'll put on them at start. But I guess that's, you, you're going to put too much on them, really, aren't you, when they were such a young squad. But they're not in shite, they're, they're in there, teetering on edge. Swansea, extremely boring. Absolutely nothing to write home about there. Watford... These lots stink, seriously. They finished 15th and they've been, like, comfortable, to be honest. They've not been in a relegation battle all season. They've never been in them screenshots, had the with bottom seven, eight teams. But they are crap. This is only the second season back in Championship after being relegated again. And they did sell Jal Pedro at the start of year, so I will come a bit slack. But some of the players, Espria, Kone, Emmanuel Dennis back in January, the centre-halves are both good. This is a good squad. Like, nothing ridiculous. I'm not saying I expect them to be in top six. But to have only finished six points in front of relegation, only... Sorry, only finished three points in front of Wednesday who were in a relegation battle since day one and had worst out in championship history. This is shocking from Watford. It's similar to Sunderland in that I expect a lot more from them, but Sunderland are quite a young squad, aren't they? So I cut them a little bit of slack. Watford is shite. They're going all the way down here, actually. Baggies! Best manager in the league outside of McKenna and Carlos. Extremely talented manager. Playoffs looks about right. They'd have never, ever challenged for top two with some of the teams that came down in this Ipswich season. They don't have anywhere near the manpower that them three have. Like, Ipswich's team is better, and that were created in League One. The West Brom team, it's just... It's not all that. The biggest asset is Carlos. They've not had a striker in what feels like forever. DK got injured for ages, then came back and got injured again. Bless him, I love that man. But it's been a good year. If they go up, obviously I'll shove them up a bit more, but the, the top of about right. You'd expect him to be in and around there, but if they go up, then really, really good job for Carlos. But that's that. So let me know what you think. Make sure you subbed all that good stuff. If anybody disagrees with anything, then let me know. I'll definitely listen. But thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for watching. Love you all, and I'll see you in a bit. You read